would you like to be a member of the Chicago Bulls for only a month and win a world championship ring? That's exactly what Brian Williams did. This means the world to me. I can't thank you all enough for embracing me, the coaches, the players, the whole organization. Thank you for the bottom, the bottom of my heart. Bison, you've played on some pretty darn good teams. You won a championship when you're here in Chicago. Any similarities between what you've seen with Joe Dumars being his teammate now for two years? <laughs> Bison Daly, born Brian Carson Williams, April 6, 1969, died July 7, 2002. The Notorious B.I.G. had a hit back in 97 that was a catchy song everyone could understand even if they weren't in position to. Mo Money, Mo Problems. A title that will forever play in my head as I remember that all that glitters isn't always gold and to beware of what comes with extreme success and financial achievement. What's not told, or maybe it's often told but rarely understood, is that money in some cases does not buy happiness, and in the right situation can be the reason you fall or even die. Today's feature is the tragic story of Brian Williams, aka Bison Daly, and how he was reportedly killed because of jealousy, resentment, money, and another person lusting for the life he had. That other person, strangely though, was his own older brother, Kevin Williams, who like his little brother, had also changed his name to Miles DeBoard. Daly's body was never recovered because according to DeBoard, who joined Bison and his girlfriend aboard their ship unexpectedly, tied weights to his brother, along with his girlfriend and ship captain, threw them overboard into the shark-infested Tahiti waters and continued his sail after the brothers allegedly got into an argument. Bison, who we'll refer to as Brian from time to time, had retired prematurely from the NBA at 30 years old in 1999. Walking away from the remaining five years of his brand new NBA contract and $35 million to pursue his passion of exploring the world and traveling. He had won an NBA championship with the Bulls in 96-97, signed a huge seven-year $45 million deal, and was now free to enjoy the life he wanted to live. Sadly for him, his own brother wanted to live that life as well, and in typical Cain and Abel fashion, his lust and jealousy prevailed, and he allegedly took Bison's life along with his girlfriend, ship captain, and eventually his own. Let's talk about what stunted the growth of Bison Daly and what made his brother resort to such actions. Salute to Jamal McKiller, Christopher Miller, Lois Barber, and Lefty206 for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get it. Born Brian Williams in Fresno, California, he was always a free spirit and wanderer who found time for anything that had to do with exploring. A sudden growth spurt in junior high changed the course of his journey from a track star to a 6'10 star basketball player. He moved back and forth from California and Las Vegas after his parents separated and at Santa Monica Catholic High School he became a star as a junior and even a bigger one as a senior after transferring to Bishop Gorman in Vegas. He averaged an insane 9 blocks a game in high school along with 2 steals, 12 rebounds and 17 points. By all accounts, he wasn't always the popular sibling as he always felt the unwanted of the two brothers and it wasn't until he made it to the NBA his family actually wanted to claim him and show him the love his brother always got. Of course, this seesaw would change when he made the NBA and now his brother could see what it felt like now that Brian was making millions and winning alongside the greatest player of all time. Stunt number one, depression, mental health. In tragic stories like this one, you always think to yourself, man, what could have prevented this situation where a person was killed by a family member and discarded in such a way? 
In all honesty, I do believe in destiny and a script already being written for our lives. But if I'm wrong and there are circumstances that can lead to different outcomes, this is one in that it led to Bison even being in this situation in the first place. After spending a freshman season at Maryland, where he was the rookie of the year in the conference, Brian decided to transfer closer to home on the sunny West Coast and the University of Arizona. After sitting out, he had a solid sophomore season helping a team with five future NBA players to the tournament. As a junior, he really began to get attention, averaging 14 points and 8 rebounds in just 25 minutes. He decided to leave early after that season and enter the NBA draft, to which he was selected 10th overall by the Orlando Magic. He bounced around the league for his first four years until he got an opportunity with the Clippers and a bigger role and began to produce. In 95-96, he averaged 16 points and almost 8 rebounds in 33 minutes. Now a free agent, he didn't receive the offer he was looking for and sat out all but 9 games in the 96-97 season, where he signed with the Chicago Bulls and helped propel them off the bench. After winning the championship, he accepted an offer from the Detroit Pistons for seven years, $45 million, and had his best season the following season in 97-98, averaging 16 points and 9 rebounds. Even with the NBA success, getting to see different parts of his home country, signing a nice deal at the time, and having success on the floor, Bison was still allegedly depressed. He was described by teammates at the time as enigmatic and difficult to understand. There was also a situation where he had to be held back by teammates after he opened the emergency door on a plane mid-flight and made gestures of jumping to his death. It wasn't the first time he had tried to commit suicide. As his mother says, she knows of at least one other time he made the attempt and a second she knew vaguely about. Back in his early days with Orlando, he had been diagnosed with clinical depression and prescribed medication. Bison just wasn't happy. What made him happy was not money or success as a hooper. It was during the off season where he was free to travel and explore the world and learn more about himself. The business and politics of basketball had took the joy out of it and without that joy, he left the game in his prime with millions still on the table. Stunt number two, free time. Bison Daly's retirement from the NBA is a growth stunt in itself as it literally took away what he could have grew to figuratively had he stayed and built on his success. May have meant a shot at All-Star, winning another chip, or even securing another huge contract. But deeper than his leaving was the now free time it gave him, or should I say, the free time it gave his brother, an eventual killer, to search him out and kill him. Being in any professional sport, the first thing you notice is how much free time you have on your hands away from the court. That free time can be spent getting better, time with family and friends, or recovering and getting ready for another game. Even though you're free, you still revert back to the responsibilities you have as a basketball player and the environment surrounding it that's the focus of your time. When he left that environment and had so much free time to travel and no excuse to brush family off and more specifically brush his brother off, he found himself in a situation sadly he wouldn't return from. He and his brother's relationship was never a good one according to his friends and close associates. They were the complete opposites and their lives were leading opposite paths as well. Bison, who was a successful college and NBA player with financial wealth, opposed to older brother Miles, who had been pretty much a failure, chasing get-rich-quick schemes and a fast life. The two never spent more than a few days willingly together, and all of a sudden, while sailing with his girlfriend from Tahiti to Hawaii, his brother Miles showed up unannounced and asked to join the crew on their sails. 
This would be the last sale Bison Daly would make and had circumstances been different and he was still in the league with responsibilities and player obligations, he may still be alive today. Stunt number three, if I can, then you sure won't. This is how Miles the board had to have been feeling seeing his little brother become the exact person he wanted to, but was too arrogant, selfish, and impatient to become. He watched his brother rise to fame and fortune while all his elaborate schemes were failing and found the right moment in time to transfer his disappointments onto his happier little brother who unlike Miles didn't need for money. In fact, he had just left more money on the table than Miles could have even dreamed of getting his hands on and was now sailing across the beautiful oceans with his lovely girlfriend to one of the most beautiful places in the world. He tracked Bison down and invited himself by showing up to the ship to join his brother, which friends found strange because the two couldn't stand each other. They also believe Miles had already planned on killing his brother and assuming his personality and life before he surprisingly showed up to their voyage. Serena Carlin, Bison's girlfriend, who he had been traveling with, made numerous phone calls back home and explained to her family how scary things were getting aboard the ship between the two brothers and gave Bison an ultimatum that she'd leave the ship if he didn't have his brother leave. She and Bison agreed to leave together for a few weeks, only to return and continue the sail with Miles to Hawaii in agreement that Miles leave when they got there for good. It's not clear, nor will it ever be, what happened from then on, but Miles alleges that the brothers got into a fight that knocked Serena to the deck where she died, and in fear for his own life, he grabbed a gun that was on board the ship and shot his brother and the captain of the ship and threw them into the water with dumbbells tied to their feet. He returned to shore, already having changed the name of Bison's boat by himself and stole his belongings, including credit cards and passports, to which he later used in attempts to buy gold coins as Brian Williams. He was caught before the transaction cleared, but released because evidence wasn't substantial enough at the time to hold him. Later after his release, Miles overdosed on a beach and was in a coma for a few weeks before being taken off life support. I, I had a task force. That's why he gave it to me. He said, Joe, I want you to do this for me. If anybody asks you for an ID, here, give him this. His death was ruled a suicide. All in all, a truly sad, stunted growth story that could have all been avoided. Bison Daly was supposed to be a solid NBA player after receiving his million dollar contract. Instead, he was killed by his own brother and left to be eaten by sharks and never recovered. In total, four lives and more were directly ruined because of jealousy, greed, and selfish need to be more important. Rest in peace to everyone that lost their lives and may the family find a way to move on from this tragic situation. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth and I'm out.